is AI transforming the business landscape and what can we do to leverage it for good? Our guest today is Byron Torres. He is a returning guest. He was on our show way back in episode 116, and we talked about creating meaningful sales conversations online and offline. And today we're going to talk about how he has been embracing AI and has become a leader in his industry in teaching AI and how to use it. So we're going to talk about the pros and cons of AI, how it works, how you can, what you can do to leverage it for the benefits of it uh, beyond even just the business automation, which a lot of people are familiar with at this point. So Byron, welcome to Leaders Transformation. We're glad to have you back. Thanks for having me again, Nicole. I know you make it a point not to, uh, not to have guests on too often. So I appreciate the six year hiatus and for you making an exception. Has it been six years? Oh my god! Yeah, it was 2017 is when Man. we Man, yeah, isn't wow. that? Wow! I was doing the math last night, and according to my math, 17 minus 23 is six. So I was yeah. like, "Whoa, that that happened quick." Well, you know, and it's not that I don't want guests back. It's just that we have so many amazing people to yeah. feature on this show, and it's like I just can't have everybody back because then, you know, there's it so many people. Yeah, it's just completely it's hard, so. understand. And so, and yeah. no and and so I appreciate you uh, you know now we're talking about a similar but a very different topic because uh, really when when it comes to uh, em- embracing this new technology which is what I always talk about right? I I never want to be the dinosaur in the room who just doesn't know um, what's happening what the new trends are uh, when text came out I made that conscious decision to not be that so shifting very similar approach from back then but just now embracing this new technology that is uh, overtaking our earth. Yes. So talk about that. What is AI? How does it work? Let's just kind of start with an overview. Sure. So AI, the, the, the most simple explanation that I can give on AI is if we take you, for example, you are an expert in your field and you have the ability to explain uh, what that is by using words and typing, right? So if we took your the ability for you to speak, and type, but you had all this knowledge, and I asked you a question about business, even though you have this amazing knowledge, you wouldn't be able to express it because you can't speak or type, right? Flip it, let's say you have a very extensive vocabulary, you can speak in multiple languages, but you don't know anything about business. If I ask you a question about business, you can speak all day, but it might, it probably won't be very relevant. That's essentially how AI works. So you have two parts, and it's made up of a lot more A lot of moving parts, but for simplification of this and for us to really understand how it works or to get a good idea of how it works, in the same way that we're able to speak, that's the language model. So you'll hear LLM. uh, So that's the language model. It's a word processor that knows every word in just about every language. So it's able to speak, but without a brain and training, then it can't really explain what it's just a bunch of words back to back. AI is the brain and the knowledge. So we train the artificial intelligence or the brain to then be able to speak to the language model and have it give us the information that that um, that we requested from it. So the combination of knowledge and the ability to communicate is what makes AI. And AI is 100% trainable. And it is kind of a, a reflection of who we are, right? We, we learn our topics, whether it's technology, business, video production, real estate, whatever it might be, we become experts in that field and then we're able to speak. So if you think about it, the parallels are 100% there. So that makes me think about some of the pros and cons of AI, because I know a lot of people are afraid that it's going to replace humans. But what you're talking about is without the human interaction and the data that's being inputted, it's not really that useful. Right. It's so not. it's that it's that combination. Talk about that. Sure. So uh, in, in to that point, um, I was one of those people. Right. I've been using AI to some extent uh, for the last three years, um, similar to what ChatGPT is doing for my agency, Pritzer Media. We were using it to create headlines and come up with content and be an editor for us, similar to how ChatGPT is being used. November 30th, 2022 was a day that that was the day that ChatGPT was really released to the world and everything changed. Um, So I looked at my business and what we were doing and the ways that we were uh, operating and looked at AI much deeper than just a word processor or an editor or coming up with headlines. I knew that the changes that were coming 
were drastic for my other company, Vid Machine. Right? I mean, right now you can tell AI, and if you think about it, it works the same way. We train it and it gives us an output. So you can tell AI to draw a picture of a cat floating through space wearing a Santa suit with a lion behind it and, you know, dancing bees in the background. And it'll do that because it's been trained to do that. So I knew that my time was limited with what it was that we were doing. I needed to make a major change. So I had to embrace the change that 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 was coming. And I could either complain about it or embrace it. And so I chose to embrace it. And that is, but I needed to educate my myself because I, I too had those fears. What's going to happen? I, I knew that my fear of losing my job or my clients was relying on the education that I would go out and get. So I, I embraced it, looked at it, and then it got a lot less scary. Because when I looked at some of the tools that I use, like, um, I don't want to say it too loud, but Alexa, and she'll, she's going to start playing music. Um, we're using it to some extent or another. So when I looked at it, I said, wait a minute, we're already using it in our cars, on our phones, on our watches, in our kitchens to play music. So when you look at, uh, at Alexa, for example, she, out of the box, very smart. But if you say, play me a song, right out of the box, it's going to just play a song. But if we, as it got to know us, now it recognizes my voice. And when I walk in and I, I ask it to play a song, it's going to play songs that I like by artists whom I like and artists like it. It'll make recommendations. Same if my wife walks in, her playlist is going to be different. It's going to understand her voice. It's going to recognize her voice and play those types of songs. And I'm sure you've witnessed some of this. So when I looked at it in that sense, I'm already using it in my life, in my practical life, in my home, in my kitchen, in our bedroom. Not so scary when you look at it in that way. And the security of it is really in, you know, we have to look at security in different ways when it comes specifically to personal information. That's really when we have to be really careful with uh, with artificial intelligence. But for the sake of what most of us are using it for, like the example that I just gave, it's really not going to do anything other than enhance our simple tasks like listening to a song or giving me directions or recommending restaurants based on things that I've eaten in the past. So when we look at it like that, it's not so scary. We're already using it. So I'm playing the devil's advocate here for a moment. Please. So, um, so let's say, for example, you say, I love this kind of music. And so it's going to play the kind of music that you like. And then it's going to offer recommendations on other music that you like. And so there's a data set that it's really pulling from mm -hmm. a specific data set. Now, when we talk about advertisement on online and it says, oh, Nicole likes this, this and this. And so I'm going to send her more of that. And it's not going to send me some other things that it doesn't think are relevant to me. Doesn't that cause our data set to get smaller and smaller and our viewpoint to get smaller and smaller versus being able to widen it out? Now we're getting into a topic that is, uh, it, it's it's highly contentious, if you will, but if depending on how you look at it, from a business standpoint and from a marketing standpoint, it's amazing. From a consumer standpoint, it's very, it's pretty scary, right? That, that, that these systems are out there that learn about us and are able to give us more specific information. Now, uh, to our likes and outs that we listen to political views, right? I mean, we've seen a lot of that in the news as of late. Um, and I, I don't want to dive into that, but there there is a lot of that. But when you think about it, the analogy that I can give you is television. Television was shotgun approach advertising. We kind of guessed that between 8 and 10 p.m., this specific demographic was watching based on Nielsen ratings and what people were saying. This is pre-internet. Some of those ads hit, right? We, so because they were somewhat relevant to what we like based on the data that they had. Now, we give Big Brother the information willingly. So if we don't want to be targeted, you know, for the uh, lack of a better word, don't be on Facebook because Facebook has one of the largest databases ever compiled. Same with Google. Um, we tell it what we like, right? 
uh, I follow this. I checked into this restaurant. We're actively feeding the beast. The way that they make their money is by making ads that are extremely relevant to you that are Nicole checked into this restaurant. She likes this type of food. She's been there twice. So let's give her ads that are going to be relevant to that. So again, from a business standpoint, it's amazing because we know that Nicole likes these types of restaurants and visits them frequently. Now, from your standpoint, you're going to like it because this is the stuff that I like and I appreciate much more than if they're just giving you recommendations on something that you're not interested in. From a data standpoint, our data is, unfortunately, we are not, we walk around with trackers in our pocket every single day. Our phones are trackers. My watch is tracking me. It knows how long how long I've walked. It knows my uh, my heart rate when I'm sitting, when I'm standing, when I'm sleeping. We're willingly giving this information. I'm not saying that it's right that it's being used in these ways, but it is just the world that we live in. And really the only way to not participate is to not participate. Like um, if you remember the movie, Ate Myself, uh, War Games. Yes. The only way to the only way to win the game is to is the, the only way to win is to not play the game. So we have to then make the decision on whether or not we want to be and go off off the grid like some people choose to do or willingly participate to enhance our experiences even a little bit, right? Like the example of your restaurant choices. So it's uh and again, we can talk about that specific topic much deeper um and I would love to have that discussion as well with experts who both agree and disagree with it, because I think it's a it's a conversation that we need to have. And our data, our privacy is valuable, but we are willingly putting yeah. it out for the world to see. And we're not even, you know, it's funny because you get those updates to your agreements and you don't even pay attention to it. Nobody reads those things and who knows what it says in there. But I think there is a there's a level of responsibility here, too, to say what you're talking about is we are willingly giving it over. And so if we don't want it, then we have to choose not to. The mm -hmm. other side of this, too, is if you don't want it to be targeted so narrowly, then you need to be intentional about seeking out other ways of thinking, other viewpoints, and actually give it data mm -hmm. to broaden the perspective. And that's our, our role. That's because our role. What, whether, it's, whether it's our friends, whether it's the, the news stations that we watch or whatever, we are doing it to ourselves as well. So there is that level of responsibility we need to take for ourselves. But but two, this this also falls on the companies and they've done a poor job of using our information against us really. Um, so, and that's why there's so many lawsuits against companies like Meta and Google and, and other data collectors um, because they, they haven't been responsible with our information, even though we willing, we trusted them that they were going to do right by our information. And that has been abused uh, in, in many cases. Uh, and, and, you know, all you have to do is do a, a search on that and you're going to find, um, cases that are up against those big companies because we did trust them. We do trust them to some extent with our information and what they've done with it at times has been a little, you know, a little fishy. Yeah. So that being aside, you know, there's a deep conversation we can have there and debate around that. Let's talk about how we can use it for good and how you're using it. Like you said, and I love what you're just being honest and saying, look, I saw that if I didn't make a change, I would be obsolete, basically. Mm -hmm. So yep. I need to change. I mean, the only constant is change, right? Mm -hmm. We guaranteed death and taxes and change. And mm -hmm. so, you know, it would be the third. And so it is going to change. Things are moving forward. Technology is not going backwards. It's going forward. And so how do we use it for good, being intentional about our use of it? So talk to us a little bit about, about that, how you're doing it with your company and and uh, specifically even in the mortgage industry. And I know that you've been leading the charge there in terms of, of how to apply it in all areas of business operations. Sure. So in 2022, when ChatGPT came out and I had this realization that things had to change, I had just come out of, it, it was a political year, it was a, a voting year. And so we worked, we had the pleasure of working on a, a, a couple of different um, 
political campaigns. And for me as a voter, one of the things that's always been a pet peeve when voting has been propositions and really understanding how propositions worked. Um, and so I thought, what if I could take a language model like ChatGPT, but only train it on that proposition? So that way I can understand it, communicate with it, ask it to explain it to me in ways that are simplistic for me without being swayed by who spends more money on yes or no on that specific proposition. That's how this whole thing started. And so magically we made it work. Open API from open AI and in you know servers and you know our knowledge on this end, magically it worked. Um, and we partnered with a company who was doing something similar. So it allowed it allowed us to um, accelerate the process uh, since we've done a whole lot of other stuff in development. But that was the initial thought for selfish reasons coming out of political, because I knew that in 2024, right, we're it's it was going to be even bigger than 2022. Uh, it's going to be a very. Very charged year next year, right, when it comes to the political spectrum, but I wanted to have this tool ready for that. That's how it started. When I showed it to a good friend of mine who um, who is uh, a, the, he leads the wholesale division and one of the largest lenders in the country, I was just telling them what I was up to, right? Because I'm trying to find myself and what what am I doing next? I know it's AI. I'm going to learn as much as much as I can, but how are we going to implement it? And when I shared that with him, he said, can you do that for the mortgage industry too, for our, our guidelines? Our brokers have a hard time understanding guidelines. It could expedite process. So he's selling me on it. And I said, yeah, we can do that now. And so that's what we did. And that led us down the path of working uh, more with the mortgage industry, with some of these large lenders in helping brokers and borrowers digest the information and communicate only on the data that we feed it, right? Using open API. And so it's API is basically the connector. It's the bridge, if you will, that we can take this software and that software and we're going to connect it. Uh, I don't want to get overly technical because then we'll put your audience to sleep. Um, but using using multiple softwares that are readily available to us, we made this happen and only trained it on the data that we wanted it to learn. It was very important for that to happen because we didn't want to put it out into the um, into the internet world and getting information that may or may not be that may sway us and sway the system to give us information feed or the feedback. Uh, that was swayed by what's out there. We only wanted it to learn on the data that we fed it. And so when it worked for the mortgage industry, then it started taking shape. You and I were both at an event where we met Ron Klein, the inventor of the magnetic yes. strip and the NMLS. Uh, uh, so I had the chance uh, when I meet people like that, I just steal their time as much as I can, buy them coffee and say, hey, I just want to pick your brain. He was lovely enough to talk to me. And so when I asked him, how did you tackle these these big, these, I mean, it just seems impossible. How do you come up with a credit card? The, the, the How did that happen? So when he shared this story, he said, I just took existing systems and I didn't invent anything. I just reused them and repurposed them to solve a problem. Really simple. So we took, I thought back on my conversation with Ron and applied that same thing here. We needed to make it very simple for the end user to use. And let's use stuff that already exists, which in our case is this amazing technology. Um, and that's 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 how this whole thing came about. And now I knew that I could work with very um, difficult and uh, in, in challenging industries, mortgage, political, and legal, and take very complex subjects and simplify them for everyone to use. And that's what we did at Reachality, and that's what we're doing now is taking very complex information and taking this extremely complex technology and making it extremely easy for the end user to use. So that way it doesn't seem as scary. And then from a security standpoint, you know, those firewalls that we're putting up is to make sure that the information that is being fed back to our clients and to their clients is relevant to only the data that's been fed to it and not going out and, and, Maybe you've heard the term hallucinations when it comes to AI because of the language processor that we talked about. It's so well spoken that the answers that it gives us, they look real. So we believe them to be true. And then we find that they weren't because it got something from some data source that may have not been 100% accurate. Do so we wanted to make sure that 
that didn't happen. So our system and our, we call them AI agents, uh, our Lumina AI agents are, if they don't know the answer, guess what they say? I'm sorry, but we don't have, we don't have an answer for that. Try rephrasing your question or connect with somebody, click here and we'll connect you with somebody who can answer that question for you. We don't want wrong information. So from a security standpoint, we're doing everything that we possibly can to make sure that it's uh, it's being passed on in a way that is truthful and and, and honest to enhance uh, their work experience. Um, from a personal experience, uh, AI is now doing things for me that allows me to go to bed at night knowing that all those tasks that would keep me up or stack up on my desk are gone. They're being done automatically. So, I mean, there's been automations all this time. We've we've seen it. But AI now, different tools that are out there are allowing me to, to do these things. It sends out my reminders. It does everything. It writes emails. It sends texts on my behalf in my voice because I've trained it to be to speak in my persona. Um, so AI from a personal standpoint is is also, it, it's freeing me up to do the things that I truly like to do and actually get some sleep at night instead of staying up wondering if those things are going to get done. So you bring up a really good point because of the data. So we talked about data sets earlier. That data set, you know, I was thinking about it as a coach. How does how can I apply this, or how can you know? Because you can basically get all this information that's out there. But it's kind of like Google in a way. You can have a whole lot. Let you go to Chat GPT. You can have a whole lot of information. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's accurate. To your point, and so you know, you talked to me about this idea of having a a closed space of, of like, okay, so for example, my podcast, I've had these people on my show and there's a certain amount of content. I can extract that content and actually create an AI agent that searches that content in particular to find the answer, but doesn't go out into the world because there could be a whole lot of other stuff, which is junk mm-hmm. out there. I'm not saying all of it, but there's some stuff, right? Like, you know, it starts, to, it starts, like you said, sway, it starts to sway in different directions or whatever. Whereas if I know that I put good quality, it's garbage in garbage out, same old thing. I put good quality in and then we can search that. It just makes it that much more efficient as opposed to somebody having to dig through, uh, you know, hours and hours, right? 475 episodes of, okay, you know, where, I mean, I have a search field on my, on my website. That's great. But the next level of that would be not just have a search field and say, you know, where are their keywords about time management or whatever, but literally plug in, you know, a question, give it a prompt and actually have it give the information based on that data set. Yep, 100%. And that's a perfect example. We can take all of your um, all of your data, all of your podcasts, written content, put it into this AI agent, and not only just ask it questions to get answers, but have a full conversation with it. Uh, so one of the things that I initially did with ChatGPT was just do that. I would have full, com- you would think I was talking to my best friend. I would just have full conversation because I wanted to see how it learned, how it talked, how it got to know me. So in the same way, now we can do that with your with, with your data set and, and build this AI agent around leaders of transformation. So when we ask a question about, I mean, you've had what, 400 and almost 500 episodes at this point, anybody can come into, into your system and start speaking to your AI agent and probably have an answer to any business question that's been out there because you've covered just about everything out there. So imagine how powerful that would be for uh, for somebody new in business to come and have that conversation with all of these experts and all of this knowledge that we've trained this AI agent to be. It's, I mean, that that, that just sounds- It's mind-blowing. I, I, as, as soon as we build that for you, I can't wait to use it because for me, it's just, it just sounds amazing. You know, yeah. so it's, uh, yeah, that, and you're right. It's just data in, data out. And, and it, it's only going to be on information that you want your audience to uh, to communicate with. I don't say answer questions. I, I I say that all the time, and I'm trying not to because it's a communication tool, uh, and and it's multilingual. So let's say now you have somebody who English is not their first language, but they still want to learn about business in Spanish, Chinese, German, French, Italian, whatever language, and they can speak to it, ask it, and guess what? It's going to answer in their language. It's going to translate all your content automatically. It's remarkable. Yeah, that's the word remarkable. Uh, it truly is. Now, um, for those listening, just a little little uh, side note, 
if that's something that you would like me to do, then uh, you can post it in the comments or reach out to us and say yes, uh, because we're definitely considering doing that uh, and having that as a resource for you. So uh, there is that. Um, coming back to this idea of being a small business owner and utilizing this, and let's talk about ChatGPT and some of the other tools that are available. Because mm-hmm. when you talk about ChatGPT, it's a d- does it learn me when I'm having this conversation, or do I need to have a specialized plugin or software program like Cast Magic? Shout out to Cast Magic. Cast Magic. I was using it. Uh, recently, where it learns me in that, you know, how does that, how does that work? Well, Chat GPT actually has a persona. We'll we'll talk about them, but there, uh, Bard is is Google's product. There's other ones out there, um, Claude. Th- there are other options out there, but Chat GPT is the the big name in the room, right? So we'll talk about them. You can actually using Chat GPT three point five. Um, which is the free version at this point. I'm sure that's going to accelerate as we as, as time goes by. Um, you could actually go in and in the settings of it, train it to be your persona on how you want it to answer you. Uh, and so there's a persona feature within ChatGPT that you can build out. So that way the answers that it gives you are more relevant or speak more in your tone and in your voice. So how I use ChatGPT now uh, or any of these languages. Well, actually, we use our own reality system internally, but it works in very similar ways. Um, back when um, when I when I would write for any time I write for news articles or magazines or been asked to write for books, my um, what I would do is I would write it, send it to my editor slash ghostwriter. They would rewrite it in my tone, my voice, send it back to me three days later, and then I'd make my edit, send it back to her. And then kind of keep going back and forth until it was right. And the the length of it depending on depended on the length of the article, or you know if we were doing a, you know a, a chapter for a book, for example, took a week, days, a week, weeks sometimes. So what what I do now is I've made ChatGPT or our system internally, but ChatGPT in the same way, my editor. Um, so everything that I that that is out there isn't just write me an article on AI. That's too broad and it's going to do that. What I do is I actually write an article on, let's say, the usage of AI in the mortgage space. And I'll write a 1,500-word article. Then what I'll do is I'll take that and I'll paste it into JetGPT. But before I do that, I'll say, I want you to rewrite this for this audience. Uh, The audience is between the ages of 25 and 40 years old. And I want you to use terms like and speak in the voice of and then paste it and it does it and it writes it in that in that tone. So now what would take me days, weeks, or even months sometimes to get an article right is taking me minutes to do. So I use ChatGPT as my main editor rather than just asking it to write something for me. So it's still me, it's still my voice, it's learned and it's learning me even deeper every single day. So now the articles that I write or the content that I write is extremely similar just better written then um then it 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 mimics me in in that way so that's how i would uh encourage your users to to do it then we can to use it then we can go even further than that and say take this article and write a linkedin post and include these hashtags or find the uh, relevant hashtags to this article and keep it under 100 words and it'll do that write a description for my tiktok video and uh, in the same way, but keep it to 25 words and use three hashtags of, you know, these hashtags. And it'll do that in a, now because it's learned the difference between a LinkedIn audience, a TikTok audience, an Instagram audience, a Facebook audience. So now I've taken something that would take me a long time to do and I use it and I do it immediately and my content is ready. So for easy digestion, is that the right word? Consumption uh, for your users? Uh, that's how I would use it immediately. You can do that right now. You can do that with recipes for home use. Right? Uh, you can put your recipes in that have been passed on for you know for generations. Teach ChatGPT how to do it. Make a combination using grandma's recipe for cookies and make make them into oatmeal instead of chocolate chip, and it'll do that. Right. So it's it's a great tool that we can use both for business aspects as long as we train it correctly. And for personal use. Amazing. 
Yep. Amazing. So you, we've talked about some of these simple ways that you can use it. And I know from the complex ways you talk about having an agent using it for, because that's marketing, customer service, operationally. Uh, what have we not talked about that is important for people to be aware of that if somebody is a CEO of a major company and let's say they're saying, they're listening to this and they're going, okay, well, so how do we use it? Sure. And to give you an example with, with our product. So we needed we're an AI integration and software development company. It's a mouthful. So if I approached businesses with that, they look at me like deer in headlights because it's just, what, is that, what does that even mean? So we knew that we needed to create simple solutions that they could implement immediately to get to know the system, not be afraid of AI and how it works, and then get to know and trust our team and, and, and reachality in general. Um, and one of the ways that we're using it, I was demoing it for um, for a loan operating system uh, company, and th- th- we were demoing one specific function because it is conversational, like we talked about, it'll talk back and forth, uh, it'll communicate. So long gone are the days of filling out a form, waiting for a phone call back, or asking it the little chat widget a question, and then here's a link of 10 articles for you to read, right? No more of that. It actually answers questions right on the spot. So the end user feels as if they're speaking with somebody because they truly are. They're speaking with the persona of us. Um, and from a customer service standpoint, uh, when I was presenting it for one specific purpose, the CEO stopped and said, wait a minute, um, let's talk about customer support. How can can we add customer data if they log into the system and have them speak to that specific issue on their account. So he started going deep into the, like his wheels were turning. And at the end of the call, he called me and said, if we can do this, I could, he, he's outsourcing a lot of the, um, of the customer support overseas. And one of the biggest complaints that he gets is, you know, when I speak with somebody, sometimes it's hard to understand specifically when you're dealing with senior um, homeowners. Um, I think I can cut that completely by using this tool and only using my US based agents who can speak to our customers because this answers everything am i am i reading this correctly is what he said i said absolutely it can do that so from a customer service standpoint we're seeing the use cases presenting themselves to us because people are now and that's why it's important to talk about it in very simplistic terms rather than too deep because then as soon as you start doing that they understand like, wait a minute, if we can do this, can we do that? Typically today and with today's technology, if somebody has a concept of how it can be used in their business, the answer is yes, it can be done. It comes down to two things, time and budget, right? Do you have, how soon do you want it? And do you have the budget to make it happen? And if it's a simple solution, both of those could be fast and inexpensive. If it's an extremely customized solution, for, for example, for a bank, or for the IRS, that's going to take a little bit longer and cost a little bit more, right? But finding that fine line for us was important because we want to make sure that this isn't an exclusive product that only the large companies can use, but all businesses can benefit from. And so we wanted to make sure that our solutions were simple to use in that way. Awesome. Well, I think there's so much here. And like, I love the fact that you're saying is when these uses come to you, you know, people suggest it, you know, it, it just allows rather than saying these are the this is the list of how you can use it it's actually opening it up to the possibility of even more uses from there which is which is important get people thinking about the possibilities um, and the creation of it themselves so they're they're part of that they buy in certainly buy in more uh, when you do that anyway so um, this is great this is great and I think that's a really great place to kind of leave it for people as a starting point to um, think about it. I know that I've learned even just listening to you and we've talked before, but even just listening to you, thinking about some of the ideas and how it can be used. It's just, it's just amazing. The one thing I do want to say, and maybe you can speak to this is for all the people that are listening out there going, okay, wait a second. That means that all these jobs are going to be eliminated. Yes. These jobs can be eliminated. And every time there's been a change or transition in, in, in the world and, and, some job is obsolete. There's other opportunities, just like we were just talking about. There's other opportunities that uh, doors that are open, you know, and and so talk a little bit about where you see the opportunities for those people who 
may have been in customer service or counting on uh, a job that is now being replaced or a good part of it has been replaced. Uh, what do you see in terms of trends and, and where should people be looking? And even people looking for their kids, like, you know, where would you recommend they start considering you got young kids and you get them in university and so forth. It's like, where do you recommend they go and what, yeah. do, what do you, you know, and learn? A great question. And short of it is I was one of those people, right? I talked about earlier how uh, I knew that my job was going to be obsolete and I could either uh, cry about it or do something about it. And I see the trend and it's going in this direction. So we have to embrace this change as it's coming. So AI is not going, is not replacing people. I'm sure you've heard this uh before, but AI is not going to replace people. People who use AI are going to replace people who do not. Um, I spoke with an attorney office uh, just a couple of days ago, and they were adamant about not using AI in any aspect, not for case uh, writing cases or whatever lawyers do, but even from a customer service standpoint, they said, absolutely not. And I wasn't pitching it. We were just having a conversation. Right? I, we were just talking. And my answer to him was very blunt. I'm not one to beat around the bushes. I'm not rude. But at the same time, I said, well, then in five years, you're not going to have any clients. It's that simple. And they looked at me like I was crazy. You know, well, we have this experience. I, I'm not questioning your experience, but other attorneys who are coming up and are going to be embracing this technology and get things done more efficiently, quicker, Right. And, and when we're talking about the legal system, it's about efficiency and how fast can you get, you know, a, 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 a verdict in either direction. Um, it's going to happen. So and that's not me being mean. It's just me being realistic. Remember, at one point there was a huge company and I wish I had names of these companies, but somebody made wheels, uh, wooden wheels for buggies. Then the car came out and started using rubber wheels. The wheel company, the, the 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 wooden wheel company, hey, listen, that was a losing battle. They could stick around and say, hey, our wooden wheels are going to last a lot longer. But guess what? Cars came along and destroyed that industry altogether. Um, in the same way, that's kind of where we are. And I And again, I hate to be so harsh, but really and what I tell my kids is learn everything when it comes to technology. Don't be the dinosaur in the room. Don't just stick with TikTok and Instagram. Go deeper. How does Instagram work? How does it learn these things? Ask the how and the whys, and you're going to get this. So for somebody in customer service, what I would do, if I was in customer service, I would become an expert in prompting AI. So that way, when I interviewed for a company, yes, this is my experience, but I've been using AI, and here's how I can help enhance our communication internally. Start owning the job before you even get the job. And believe me, that person is going to stand out a whole heck of a lot more than the person that comes in and doesn't understand AI. So embrace it, learn it, and apply it into your um, into your everyday life and, and what you're doing at your current job. You don't need to go to AI University to learn. Go to YouTube and start watching videos that are specific to you. Go to ChatGPT and ask it. Okay, here's my I'm I'm a customer service representative. And I need to embrace AI to improve my skill set. I want to accomplish one, two, three, four, five. Tell me what it is that, it, or help me write out a plan on how to get to X. And guess what's going to happen? You're going to have a very detailed plan. So we need to embrace it, Nicole, because it is not going anywhere. In fact, it's going to be even more relevant a, a year from today. I, I, I can't even imagine where we're going to be in five years when it comes to artificial intelligence. So just like the guy who made or the company who made those wooden wheels for buggies, they had to probably switch over to start making rubber wheels at some point. And that's, that's the crossroads that we're at today. Yeah. Yeah. Byron, thank you so much. This is great. And I love the way that you look at both sides of it and looked at the security of it and looked at the opportunity of it. And so you give a, a broad based perspective on it and also your own experience with it and saying, look, I need to reinvent myself and I needed to, in order to, you know, stay up with the times and, and be able to take advantage of this opportunity. We can see it as a, as a, an obstacle or, or a crisis, or we can see it as an opportunity and, uh, and both of the, the, the seeds of both 
are in this. But I think about like the internet, you know, it's like, no, I'm not going to use the internet. Well, you know, if you're an attorney and or coach or any industry, you know, any, anybody in professional services or non-professional service, whatever, if you say, well, I'm just not going to use the internet, it's going to be, your world's going to get really, really small. And, uh, and it's, you're going to miss out on so, so much. Can it be used as a, as a, uh, as a crutch? Can it be used as a weapon? Yes. It can also be used as a tool. You get to choose how you use it. So I encourage you to go to reachality.com and find out more about that from, uh, from Byron, but how he's using it, honestly, seriously, but how he's using it, how you can use it, go to chat GBT, search, ask it questions, learn this prompt engineering about how to, which is a big phrase for basically learning how to have conversations with it. Somebody said to me, by the way, this was interesting that I was talking to about AI. And he said, I think this is actually going to help people be more effective communicators Mm -hmm. because they're going to need to ask very specific questions to get the answers that they're looking for, you know, and, and uh, we were talking about the fact that sometimes, you know, how we ask a question, we talk to our spouse and we say something and it gets misunderstood. And then they say, and we're like, no, 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 that's not what I meant. Not all this back and forth. When you talk to, you talk to AI, it, it doesn't have any emotions, at least not yet. Doesn't have any emotions, but literally what you put in is what you're going to get back. So it's going to, it, when, when Tony Robbins says communication is the response you get, Oh, you're going to get to learn it. You're going to get to learn. You know what? That question really wasn't very quality because I got something that I didn't really, it wasn't useful to me. So I think this is really going to help people to uh, all of us to be more effective communicators and to really understand what it is that we're looking for, be clear in our intentions. So there's so many benefits to this. Any absolutely. last thoughts, Byron, before we finish? No, I, I love I, I love that analogy because you're absolutely right. If we ask it, you know, if you ask just a general question of ChatGPT or our spouse, you're going to get a general answer that we may not like or may not be very good because we didn't do a good job at explaining it. So you're absolutely right. If we're very detailed in asking these questions or prepping it to do X, and then we take that into our real world application and speak to our children, our friends, our family, our spouses in that way with intention and make it very clear there's a human connection that I hadn't even made. So thank you for that. That is awesome. Yeah. All, all the parents out there trying to talk to their te- any, teenagers. Any, oh, well, you guys, you just, believe a me. A whole other podcast right there. <laughs> but Nicole, as always, thank you so much. And if anytime you call, I pick up. Uh, so anytime you need anything, or if your audience needs anything from a, uh, from the aspect of, of just learning and using me as a resource, the invitation is there. So thank you again. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. And we'll make sure that the links to your website, and I know that you also have that opportunity where people can book a call with you. Uh, we'll make sure that's all in the show notes, of course, on the leaders of transformation.com. And seriously, for those of you that are listening out there, if, if you would like to have, like I was talking about earlier, if you would like us to create that AI agent where you can source through our entire library of 475 at this point episodes and be able to extract information, let us know. We'd love to hear that. That's good input for us to know whether or not that's a valuable tool that will benefit you. And of course, we also want to hear like, how is this, how is even this conversation benefited you? What did you learn? You know, how are you going to be able to apply it? If there's anything we can do to support you, let us know because we want to support you in becoming the leader of transformation that you're capable of being and whatever that, that looks like. And so you can reach out to us on leaders of transformation dot com or you can of course find us on social we're all over social as well so thanks for joining us here today and we'll look forward to seeing you next week on another episode of the latest transformation